the Midwest is more than just flyover country, it's America's heartland. America's heartland. A place of boundless possibility, striking natural beauty, and hometown values, it's like a Norman Rockwell painting come to life. Hi. For these reasons and more, it's also the perfect place to sample a family-friendly crossover like the all-new 2016 Hyundai Tucson. Undoubtedly, the company wants it to make a big splash, but can it keep their sails afloat? Will it sink or swim? Well, appropriately, they invited us out to Minneapolis, Minnesota, land of 10,000 lakes, to put it through its paces. But I gotta say, that might not be the best choice because as a native Michigander, we know a thing or two about water. After all, we've got the Great Lakes. So don't you be lecturing me, Minnesota, you hear me? And you thought water disputes only happened in California. Anyway, the 2016 Tucson has grown a little bit compared to its predecessor. Riding atop an all-new architecture that's more than 50% high-strength steel, it's about an inch wider, and its wheelbase has been stretched by roughly 1.2 inches. These dimensional changes have increased cargo capacity significantly, and with the 60-40 split back seat folded flat, there are about 62 cubic feet of interior space, a good bit more than the outgoing model. While we're back here, it's worth noting that Hyundai also offers a smart power lift gate. With the key fob on your person, just stand near the hatch for a few seconds and it pops open all on its own. And this is fantastic if your arms are full with grocery bags, for instance. Moving up front, drivers have a couple power plants to choose from. The Tucson's base engine is a two-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder, but the engine you really want is the optional 1.6-liter turbo. It cranks out 175 horses and, more importantly than that, 195 pound-feet of low-end torque, which is important in a vehicle that's designed to haul people and cargo. You also get a more advanced gearbox, a segment-first seven-speed dual-clutch automatic. For motorists residing in areas that receive all four seasons, like the Midwest, selectable all-wheel drive is available with either engine. And when you get all-wheel drive, you also receive windshield wiper de-icers, because, you know, weather. In the consumption department, this Tucson Limited all-wheel drive stickers at 24 miles per gallon city, 28 highway, and 26 combined, which is not too bad. For more refinement, engineers focused heavily on NVH, that's noise, vibration, and harshness. And the new Tucson's overall structure is 18% stiffer than its predecessors, and that's a great place to start. But they also added larger engine mounts, more sound deadening, and many other things to keep unwanted racket at bay. And while I'm in here, I should probably talk about this vehicle's swanky new interior. Hyundai did a really nice job putting this together. There's a lot of soft material. There is some hard plastic, but it's attractively grained and responsibly used. Now, as for features, you do get luxury items like standard Bluetooth, USB connectivity, and keyless entry. You also get heated seats at no extra charge, as well as cruise control. Available luxury amenities include a navigation system with an eight inch display. You can get a gigantic panoramic glass roof as well. As for the back seat, it fits my six foot frame quite nicely, plenty of room. The seat cushion is at a nice height, plus the backrests adjust at the pull of a lever. It's super easy to find a comfortable position and you'll be that way for many hours, I think. It's a dangerous world out there, even in a place as wholesome as America's breadbasket, but fortunately, the new Tucson here has some of the most advanced safety features in its segment. Things like lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and automatic emergency braking are all on the options menu. Plus, every version comes with a standard rear view camera. No, I'm not going to put any of those safety features to the test as much as I would like to, but one of the first things you're going to notice when you're driving the 2016 Tucson here with the turbo engine is all the torque that it has. Engineers tune this thing to come on strong at low RPM, particularly in city driving, and you feel every one of those 195 pound feet. This thing scoots quite well in urban areas, and it's great when you've got a load of people or cargo in the back because you need that torque to get it moving. This engine hits hard at low RPM, but it does lose a little bit of steam in the upper rev range. It doesn't pull quite as strongly out on the freeway, for instance. Another benefit of this turbo engine is that it is really refined. Not much vibration makes its way into the cabin, which is always appreciated. But regrettably, the seven-speed dual-clutch automatic is not as well sorted. And it's curious why Hyundai decided to go with one of these gearboxes, because a lot of other companies have had issues with their DCTs, notably Ford with its power shift transmission. 
I'm sure they went with this unit for fuel efficiency because every automaker fights for tenths of a percent everywhere they can get them. And I'd hazard to bet they didn't use this transmission for performance because it really doesn't seem to shift any faster than what a good torque converter automatic would. Plus, it has a slipping sensation at low speeds. Shifts can sometimes be delayed when you tramp down on the accelerator. And really, it's just not worth the trade-off. In my opinion, I would have preferred a regular old automatic. The new Tucson here is just about as refined and composed as any of its rivals, and it really is exceptionally refined, even on less than perfect pavement. However, I do wish the steering had a little bit, a little bit more to it. It just seems to be lacking in road feel, and that's even in sport mode. You can cycle over to eco or normal, and it doesn't change a whole lot. You don't get that connected feel that you might get in other crossovers like a Mazda CX-5 or even the Ford Escape. Also, I wish they made the A-pillars a little bit smaller. They're kind of chunky and they do slightly block your forward visibility. While hardly a sports car or the fastest crossover in its segment, the 2016 Tucson here really is quite nice to drive and frankly, there's not a whole lot to complain about. Hyundai did quite a bang up job here. The 2016 Hyundai Tucson is more attractive and refined than ever, but it is still a tremendous value. You see, an entry-level SE version will set you back about $23,595, including $895 in destination charges. But the all-wheel drive limited version that I've been sampling checks out at $32,510 out the door. And you can look for the 2016 Tucson at Hyundai dealerships right now, even ones here in Minnesota. All right, are you ready? Okay, here we go. So don't lecture me about water, Mississippi. Mississippi? What?